The Exxon Radio Show with Rob McConnell is largely an opinion talk show. All opinions, comments, or statements of fact expressed by Rob McConnell's guests are strictly their own and are not to be construed as those of the Exxon Radio Show or endorsed in any manner by Rob McConnell, Relmar McConnell Media Company, the Exxon Broadcast Network, its affiliated networks, stations, employees, or advertisers. All-Hit Radio! Welcome to the X-Zone, a place where fact is fiction and fiction is reality. Now, here's your host, Rob McConnell. And welcome to the X-Zone, everyone. My name is Rob McConnell. We're coming to you live and around the world from our studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. I'd like to welcome all the affiliates now joining the Talk Star Radio Network live. And uh, that last hour certainly was a strange one, wasn't it, gang? Thanks very much for your emails of support. But, yes, we got through that one. If you'd like to give us a call, our toll-free number is one 877 That's toll-free throughout the U.S., Canada, Alaska, and Hawaii. Our email address is xzone at talkstarradio.com. On MSN Messenger, you can chat with us here in our studios at talkstarradio at hotmail.com and our websites, www.xzoneradio.com and www.xzonetv.com. My guest this hour is Robert Morningstar. Robert uh, Morningstar is currently the co-editor of UFO Digest along with Dirk Vanderplug. Uh, RDM is a civilian intelligence analyst, a photo analyst living in New York City. He is a graduate of the Power Memorial Academy in 1967 with a degree in psychology from Fordham University in 1974. While at Fordham University, Robert D. Morningstar was recruited as a research associate in some of the earliest studies of artificial intelligence in a program sponsored by ONI and IBM. During the 1970s, Robert D. Morningstar became a China watcher specializing in Chinese language studies, as well as Yang Family Tai Chi Master, acknowledged by the Hong Kong Tai Chi Masters Association and the highest ranking masters in RDM has taught Tai Chi for East Asian Studies Department at Oberlin College from 1980 to 1981 and as an adjunct lecturer at Hunter College from 1994 to 1995. City University of New York, um, let me see, from 1992 to 1994, he served as a consultant and movement therapist in the Behavioral Science Department at the International Center for Disabled in New York City, teaching movement therapy, stress management, and behavioral modification programs. During the 1990s, Robert D. Morningstar dedicated himself to investigating the JFK assassination and exposing the doctoring of the Zapruder film and the alteration of medical and forensic evidence in the Warren Commission report. Robert has been studying UFOs since the mid-1950s and had had several close encounters while airborne and on the ground, most recently in September of 07. Robert is a uh, civilian pilot, FAA certified instru- instru- instrument ground investigator and st- I'm sorry, instructor, and a USG certified weather specialist. Robert Morningstar works regularly with victims of alien abductions around the world via the internet, and uses Tai Chi Taoist meditation methods to relieve trauma resulting from PS- PTSS or post traumatic stress syndrome. And joining us now from New York City is Robert Morningstar. Hi, Robert. How are you this morning? Hi. Greetings. Nice having you with us, Robert. And uh, Robert, there's been a lot of hot chatter on the internet uh, that was that was first uh, brought to light by uh, Dr. Michael Sala concerning an alleged meeting, or uh, yeah, an alleged meeting at the United Nations where a UF uh, where the UFO situation was talked about, and according to documents, uh, there was supposed to be the date of 2013. That was given as the time when extraterrestrials would unambiguously uh, appear. Now, when we come back from this commercial break, I'd like to talk to you about that because now it seems that there seems to be contradicting evidence in this entire matter. And maybe you can help us put the pieces together on what is real, what is fact, and what is fiction. 
Robert Morningstar will be back with me on the other side of this commercial break as the Exxon continues live and around the world from our studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada, right here on the Talkstar Radio Network. If you'd like to give us a call with your points of view, your opinions, one 528 8255 My name is Rob McConnell. Robert Morningstar and I return on the other side of this break right here on Talkstar. Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi-Fi, you can still listen to the X-Zone Radio Show with Rob McConnell, The Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiaka, X-1, Dimension X, Space Patrol, and every minute of the X-Zone Broadcast Network by calling 213-401-0080, courtesy of Audio Now. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. It saves your data plan, and it's free if you have unlimited minutes. Call 213-401-0080 to listen on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Remember 213-401-0080 for the best of the paranormal, parapsychology, and sci-fi radio programming anywhere. 24-7-365. Hi everyone, Rob McConnell here and I wanted to spend a moment on internet streaming. Everybody has heard about internet streaming, but not many know much about it. Did you know the internet streams just about everything? Movies. From new releases to old classics. TV shows. Almost every show, every episode, and much more. But the question has always been, how do you do it? Well now, thanks to the folks at 123 Ready TV, I have the answer for you. They have developed a simple program app, 123 Ready TV, that you install on your Windows PC, Android smartphone, or Android tablet that can have you streaming like a pro in less than five minutes. You truly won't believe how much is available or how easy it is to do until you try. And for a one-time cost of only $19.99, sense this product is a real winner to learn more about 123 ready tv visit our website at www.xzbn.net robert morningstar is our special guest and uh, robert is wondering if you could help us uh, sift through the cross information that is appearing on the internet about what really happened or what really didn't happen at this alleged meeting at the united nations pertaining to ufos sure i'll be happy to do that But first of all, I'd like to say that no one should be surprised that such a meeting occurred. It's not the first time in history it's happened. In 1978, there were major hearings there, uh, chaired by uh, Prime Minister uh, Geary of uh, Grenada. Mm -hmm. And uh, something was moving along at that time uh, toward disclosure. And just coincidentally, about three days before that uh, was to occur, the major hearing there, the big thing in Grenada blew up, and the United States moved in and rescued the medical students, et cetera, et cetera, and the whole thing died. I would also like to say that uh, Stanton Friedman addressed the United Nations in the General Assembly 30 years ago. So UFOs of the United Nations is nothing new. And but the information that is that is uh, circulating around the Internet pertaining to this this uh, this meeting yes. that happened in February certainly... Uh, certainly is different from the other information that we've had about the United Nations before. Of course, and it's because of the events of the last, well, uh, the events of the last four years, but in particular, the events of the last year, particularly starting with the um, conference in Washington, D.C. on November 12th, which I attended, at which uh, 12 to 16 people from around the world spoke. And these were not you know, witnesses from the boonies, you know. I met Major General de Breuer, mm-hmm. chief of the air staff of the Belgian Air Force, who was chasing the triangular UFO all over the Belgian skies in 1988, uh, 89, and 90. The same craft that was appearing in the Hudson Valley, New York, my territory, throughout the 1980s. And the picture of this craft is now appearing in uh, UFO Digest, I'd like your viewers to uh, tune into that. The the photo was leaked by the New York Times on February 6th under a facetious article that was labeled Space Junk. Space Junk and Dangerous Debris in Outer Space, a great concern. 
and they showed this photograph, and I looked at it, and I, I, I expressed my opinion that uh, how fatuous the, the label was. But this is the way things happen when things are leaked. Mm-hmm. And that's what we're talking about today, the leaking of information through conduits like myself. I was uh, fortunate enough to be in the right place in the right time with uh, the right credentials, I would say. So I was uh, advised that this was going to happen uh, the day before it happened. That would be February 11th. And February 12th in the morning, 8 o'clock in the morning at the United Nations, a closed-door session was held. Now, this is different than the uh, follow-up meetings that have been described by Mr. Gilles Laurent, uh, the Frenchman, who's now finding himself in hot water because they've gone and nitpicked through all of his credentials and have found that uh, he didn't belong to some prestigious uh, acronymic organization that he had claimed. But the interesting thing about this discreditation is that they are discrediting the man, but they are not discrediting the information. So that's well, a very important point. All right, now... Um... How do we know that the information that was leaked was true and not disinformation? You no, know, the UFO community is the first one to scream that the government oh, yeah. is is releasing, you know, disinformation. Course, How do we know that the UFO community is not the ones releasing this disinformation? Well, that's correct. Um, I was approached um, and told about this. Mm-hmm. And I was told that it was um, an official an official initiative. I would like to say that I mentioned the uh, appearance of the heads of air forces. I met the head of the, the former head of the Iranian Air Force, uh, General Parvez Jafari, who's very famous for having chased the UFO over the skies of Tehran in an F-4 in uh, 1976. And that is legendary. It's an officially documented U.S. Air Force investigation. Mm-hmm. And uh, the man who was the pilot later became the head of the Iranian Air Force. Uh, this was at the time of the Shah, before the current, uh, the current uh, fundamentalist uh, regime. I met, uh, as I mentioned, the chief, deputy chief of the air staff of the Belgian Air Force. I spoke with Governor Fife Symington. But, sir, no, no disrespect here. I'm trying to get to the bottom of what happened to the meeting of the United Nations. The, okay, what happened in... have, this is a, you have to understand that this is a process. It's not an event. This is an ongoing process that has been... Um, what I want to talk to you about tonight is the event that has been circulating on the Internet pertaining to an alleged meeting at the United Nations, which, by the way, mm-hmm. we checked out. Yes. with U.N. security, diplomatic police. We checked with a Canadian mission at the United Nations, and they all categorically denied, in fact, laughed at it. Mm-hmm. Yes. Are you a diplomat? Then don't expect diplomats to speak to you. Are you a diplomat? I have contacts with diplomatic service. So we have contacts with diplomats as well. I'm not a okay. diplomat. I never said I was. Okay. All right, but what I want so to talk sound, about... You sound uh, a little irate and... No, this, uh, isn't I, this isn't irate, sir. This is, I want to get, I want to cut through the chase. Okay. I want to get to All the right, meeting, me because we only have an hour. Okay. I was notified the meeting would occur. I was then notified that the meeting had occurred. Mm-hmm. As a result, and Michael Sala also, Dr. Michael Sala was notified. Right. He was given the information, and he released the general uh, account of what went on at that first meeting. Mm-hmm. attended by about 28 to 30 nations. And it was accurate uh, with the information that I had gotten. And then the UFO community vented on this man. But it's not all due to that. Uh, there's so much, uh, so many factions uh, involved and so many, uh, it's parochial. You know, UFOlogy is almost like a religion. And there are different dioceses mm-hmm. and different spheres of influence. So when Michael Sala came out with this, the grudges came out, and they attacked him vociferously. Uh, me, myself being privy to, um, to the information, I put out a report saying that the call to expose the source is ludicrous. Why? Why? Because...
because when you are trusted with information and a person says to you, I'm telling you this in confidence, you, I have to protect my position, I have to protect my life, this is very dangerous, I trust you, I would like you to put this information or know it for my own, for my own protection. You must respect that. But why would this if person... someone says that to you, Rob, saying, mm -hmm. Rob, I'm going to give you this information and promise me you won't tell anybody um, that, uh, that I gave it to you, but it's true, and you believe him, mm -hmm. and it's important, and he says that my career is in danger, my life is in danger, Rob, are you going to go out there on this radio station and tell everybody the name? It depends. Uh, it, well, as a confidential and? source, no, I wouldn't. Okay. So there we have that. That okay? But That's but on the other side of the coin, on the other side of the coin, if this person is a diplomat, or if this person has information that is so far out to the left field that not makes left field. pardon, it's not left field. I've just told you what has precipitated this. But you, the governor of Arizona, ten thousand people in in Arizona saw the Phoenix Lights. Uh -huh. Scores and scores of people in Stevensville, Texas, saw this event. Ten F-16s chased it. And I would like to tip my hat to a Canadian ufologist named Don Ledger, who is one of the few people who had the insight to realize how significant this was. If you bother to look at the map of Stevensville, Texas, it's just a few miles from the Bush Ranch. So, shades of 1952. They're flying over Washington, over the Capitol, hovering over the White House, given chase by the jets of that time, mm -hmm. and they disappear. Now we are here in 2007, and they appear buzzing at 3,000 miles an hour over the Texas White House. I'd like to stick to the U.N. meeting, if well, possible. Well, you have to understand that it's not an event, it's a process. So let's go to the process. I've explained to you why I will not give you the name of the source. Then how do we know that your but source is credible? You the background. How do we That's know that your entire. source is credible? First of all, it sounded incredible to me. Did you see any evidence to support the allegations? I was called to meet with the gentleman after he read my report in UFO Digest. He said, the chiefs have read this, and they said, at last, we have a rational person that we can talk to. And I was called... Monday, which would have been um, the, uh, the 24th. Mm -hmm. So I was called and invited to, uh, to meet with them on Tuesday. And I was asked, please put everything aside. They've read what you've wrote, written, and they want to bring you into the loop. He's going to come tomorrow, show you his credentials, and show you his background, and explain to you what is going on. And so I met with him, and I met a military liaison diplomat from the Pentagon who showed me his credentials, voluminous credentials, satisfied me, a very highly decorated naval officer. We sat for five hours, and he explained the situation. All right, just one quick question. Uh, we've got to go to our commercial break here with the news at the bottom of the hour. Is the government aware that these people are letting this information out? When you say the government, you have to understand that there are many departments of government. And for the first time in history of the military of the United States, one service controls the major positions. All right, can I get a yes or a no, please? Yes. Then why don't they go public? Why all the clandestine why do you think, operation? What is happening now? They are going public, and this why, is the process. That why don't they going. go to a major media with credibility, a major media that could actually do a background investigation well, and get both sides of the coin? Something stinks about this. We've got to go to our commercial break. One eight seven seven five two eight eight two five five is our toll free number. Everybody wants to be a legend in their own mind. I'm telling you. I'll be back on the other side of this commercial break as we continue live and around the world on the Talk Star Radio Network. Still to come on tonight's show, we're going to be speaking to UFO Bob about the suppression of UFOs over Wisconsin. My name's Rob McConnell. This is the Exxon live and around the world on the Talk Star Radio Network.
This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi-Fi, you can still listen to the X-Zone Radio Show with Rob McConnell, The Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiaka, X-1, Dimension X, Space Patrol, and every minute of the X-Zone Broadcast Network by calling 213-401-0080, courtesy of Audio Now. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. It saves your data plan, and it's free if you have unlimited minutes. Call 213-401-0080 to listen on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Remember 213-401-0080 for the best of the paranormal, parapsychology, and sci-fi radio programming anywhere, 24-7-365. Hi everyone, Rob McConnell here, and I wanted to spend a moment on internet streaming. Everybody has heard about internet streaming, but not many know much about it. Did you know the internet streams just about everything? Movies. From new releases to old classics. TV shows. Almost every show, every episode, and much more. But the question has always been, how do you do it? Well now, thanks to the folks at 123 Ready TV, I have the answer for you. They have developed a simple program app, 123 Ready TV, that you install on your Windows PC, Android smartphone, or Android tablet that can have you streaming like a pro in less than five minutes. You truly won't believe how much is available or how easy it is to do until you try. And for a one-time cost of only $19.99, sense this product is a real winner to learn more about 123 ready tv visit our website at www.xzbn.net just going over an email here that was uh, sent to dr sala at exopolitics.org from sean and clay and they say uh, dear michael this email is a follow-up to the u.n meeting which took place on tuesday the 12th 200 uh, 2008 at 8 a.m we met our source 7 p.m. Monday, February the 18th, 2008, and our source stated the following. Number one, the meeting went well. However, our source left with a degree of frustration. Number two, the meeting covered various topics. The issue of recent UFO sightings was one of many topics discussed. Number three, security around the meeting was intense. Number four, everyone was searched. Pens, pins, keychains, items were collected and not allowed into the meeting room. There were multiple security checkpoints. U.N. security cards were confiscated upon entering the room. Number five, 50 to 60 people attended. The, everyone is, was in civilian dress except one Russian. Number six, other countries may have had military there, but they came under their rep- respective civilian titles. Number seven, UFO topic was addressed. The Russians are very paranoid about the West. Putin is not very trusting. This frustrated other source greatly. Uh, our source believes the Russians will eventually come around. They always come back to the table. This mistrust appears to be an ongoing issue between the East and the West. Number eight, religious implications of contact came up during the meeting. It turned into a 20-minute debate. Our source had to reel it in and refocus the meeting. It seems that the Indians are very difficult to deal with on this issue of religious implications regarding contact. Population is a major factor in how nation states deal with new uh, paradigm. The Indians' worldview has led to, uh, has led to an unstable food, energy, and water demand. Source stated that the world must get its population and resource under control. ET will help, but we must show them that we intend to live with our cons- live within our constraints. If we don't show some semblance of intent, they will simply not help. Number nine, source said the 2013 date of contact is wrong, the date when things heat up. The real date of contact is 2017. It is on this date when very large craft will appear above the cities and sit. There will be no use of force. 
They will just sit there. Source stated Independence, film, Independence Day film was close, but their ships are not that big, and again, no force will occur. Our source cannot reveal his source for the 2017 date. His source is a very high government military intelligence structure. Number 10, source stated that in our choice, uh, I'm sorry, number 10, source stated that it is our choice how we embrace this contact. Number 11, the ETs who will arrive on 2017 are referred to as controllers. They are a Galactic Federation type group. However, Galactic Federation is not the real name of their group. It is a hypothetical name used as a reference. Number 12, the controllers have a keen sense of freedom and free will. They will not intervene and help humanity if humanity does not show them uh, show them we want their help. If uh, some anthropic event happens in brackets nuclear qu- in nuclear war, the controllers will not make contact. This is something they will not tolerate. Our source stated. Number thirteen: the controllers will not give us technology to expand our ability to feed ourselves if we do not recognize the, necess- the necessity to stabilize our population growth. They don't want our planet's population on uh, to double because of a technological innovation seeded by them. Our source used India as an example. India has over one billion people. It is clearly a country out of balance in terms of its population size. And finally, number 14, a contentious m- uh, moment in the meeting had to do with the religious implications of contact. It is this issue which is the most concern. Our source stated that more secular societies will adjust more easily to contact than fundamentalists. He stated the Roman Catholic countries will not have a rough time except the uh, population problem. The Roman Catholics already have three gods in one, so accepting others is not that much of a stretch. The dividing point is going to be the containment of population. The Protestant countries will deal fairly with will deal fairly easily with contact. So will the countries with indigenous religions connected to nature. The Muslim, Hindu, and fundamentalist Christian religions will have the most difficult time, possibly the elimination of said religions. We can expect mass suicide, social unrest, and upheaval. The ETs will help with reprogramming and the concept of an inclusive galactic order. However, society will have to step up to the plate to assist one-on-one. Those people who will have shattered belief systems, the Chinese will have no problem because of the Buddhist and Taoist influences. And this was signed by Clay and Sean Pickering. Now, these two gentlemen who were given the initial information, are you dealing with the same source, or was their source Gilles Laurent? Uh, no, I'm dealing with the same source. I, I was introduced by um, by Sean and Clay to uh, to the contact. There's one part. Oh, in, may in, I interject for a moment? In uh, in a second, in a second. There's one part that really uh, worries me in this entire thing, and that is uh, number 14, where it says, you know, we can we can expect uh, here where it says the Hindu and the fundamentalist Christian religions and will have the most difficult time, possibly even the elimination of said religions. We can expect mass suicides, social unrest, and upheaval. Yes. That uh, it should worry you, and that's what worries them. And there is a precedent for this because if you just recall, about uh, 11 years ago, mm-hmm. there was a mass suicide in San Diego where these. People were following this fellow Applewhite who misguided them. And, Heaven's uh, Gate, yeah. Okay, so yeah. this is a real concern. Let me take you back to 1938 and the war, 39, War of the Worlds. Right? This is, a, this is the paradigm by which uh, the government has been going, that the, the fear of the human being, of the strange, of the foreign, of the unknown, is an atavistic uh, psychological element of the psyche. And so this is where what I'm involved in is this psychological aspect of diffusing the fear and uh, creating an, a space in people's minds to be able to be open to it and understand it in a non-threatening way. And how are you going to do that? Oh, by speaking on the Rob McConnell show, writing articles on UFO Digest and appearing on other radio shows and showing that I'm not afraid of this uh, paradigm shift. But, with the, you know, like, it's, it's nice to say you have this, this information. Okay, you asked me why... Where's the beef? For this? Let me interject. 
Where is the beef? I am a member of the U.S. Naval Institute. Mm-hmm. And I am a member of the Federation of American Scientists, mm-hmm. which is a think tank that yeah. is associated with the United States Navy. All right. This is a United... You asked me if people in government know about this. Yes. Right. This is a U.S. Navy initiative. The United States Navy has had the lead in this uh, field of UFOs for over a hundred years. I can tell you that the first encounter of the U.S. military with a UFO occurred at the Portsmouth Naval Yard, Portsmouth, New Hampshire, in 1896. That's how far back the United States Navy goes with this Mm -hmm. and the other associated phenomena that is called USO unidentified submarine object. So this is not a new thing, Rob. And I think you're putting blinders on yourself, uh, along with other people, who have been constrained by a mind control program that was based on a report in 1952 called the Robertson Commission Report. At that time, they were worried that the reports, which were coming in from all over the country and all over the world, were locking up the communication system of the Pentagon. And it was feared that if these reports continued to come in, the United States might be caught in a bind where we have occasion to defend ourselves against the Russians. We didn't know what this thing was in the 1950s. We didn't know how long it's been around. Do we know now? Yes. You read your Bible? That's how long it's been around. That's how long it's been around. Uh, are you a Christian? You believe in God? I believe that we're all connected. You believe in God? A single deity? No. A multiple deity then? No. Then you don't believe in God, right? I don't believe that. I believe that God is in each and every one of us. Plus, we're talking about UFOs, That's not right. God. So, do, Robert, get well, back to the subject. No, don't no. Don't get real. I'm telling you that these Batman, are the major concerns now. of intelligent people. You don't want to listen to me. You don't want to answer my questions. You're not on my show. It's that simple. Why is it when you get these people who have their own little way of thinking, they don't want to give you a direct answer? For the last 45 minutes, I've been trying to get this guy to give me a direct answer, and all I've gotten is the runaround. I'm not like other talk show hosts who are going to just sit there and on uh, believe everything you shove under my nose. I want proof. I want answers. And if you can't give me answers, and if you want to start talking, goodbye. I don't need this. My listeners don't need this. And it's with this kind of mentality that rational people do not buy the UFO crap that these people are trying to force feed us. It's not going to work. It's not going to happen. You know, it's... God, I've, you know, like, there's a lot of crap out there. You all talk this line. You all talk secrecy. You all talk about the, the ability to use your credentials in order to get this information But you can never come out and say who the source is. Never. What are you hiding? Why don't you say, why don't you tell the people the truth? Why do you have to hide behind the the sources? The source is confidential. You saw his credentials. They look good to you. You're a member of the scientific community. We're not sheep. You know what? We're not going to buy everything that you tell us. We're not going to buy everything that other people tell us. We want answers. And if you can't give me simple answers to straight questions, go to other radio shows. You don't want to give answers. You can't answer the questions. You don't want to tell us what the truth is behind these uh, these allegations. There's a little group out there who's really interested, and man, they'll cling on every word. Cling on. Maybe that's where the maybe that's where the uh, Star Trek thing came from. You know, they like to cling on to every word. We don't. Michael Sala was on the show Monday. Ask him a question, you get an answer. We had a great time. 
when you go through the correspondences that these two people, Clay and Sean Pickering, sent Michael Sala, which Michael Sala was kind enough to forward to me, it brings up a lot of questions. There's a lot of holes in here. There's more holes in this entire UN UFO uh, crock of crap than there is in Billy Meyer's cheese in his uh, refrigerator in Switzerland. If you want people to really believe what you're trying to say, show the proof. I would believe and have more faith in something that comes from CNN, CBC, CTV, CanWest Global, Reuters, Associated Press, than the backstreet publications of these little cults called ufologists. Grow up, people. Look in the sky, see UFOs. And then, of course, if you get kind of put into a corner, you bring God into the picture. This is scary. I'll be back on the other side of this commercial break as the Exxon continues on the Talk Star Radio Network, Exxon TV, and on shortwave from our studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. There's a lot of credible UFO people out there who really believe, and their one thing is to get to the truth, not to suppress it, not to keep people behind doors. This sounds like another chapter out of the X-Files. And isn't it funny that Don Ledger, as he said, put one and one together and got that the UFO was very close to George Bush's uh, ranch? Well, wasn't one of the people who saw this UFO an expert pilot? And if it was that close, wouldn't this expert pilot who saw the UFO come up with this conclusion? I'll be back after this break as the Exxon continues live and around the world on the Talk Star Radio Network from our studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. Geez, this is a historic night here on the X-Zone. We've never had uh, to, uh, to bite the dust uh, before. Welcome back, everyone. Uh, I, I don't know what to say. You, know what? you ask a question, you should get an answer. Is that so hard to do? Question, answer, question, answer. Not question, run around, question, run around. Question, answer. That's the name of the game. Once again, uh, Michael Sala was, uh, Dr. Michael Sala was on the show Monday. We had a great interview. It was very informative. Information exchanged. Number of people buy into the idea that this is a real event that happened at the United Nations. However, the majority of our listeners and the majority of people who have heard about this this information on the internet don't take it seriously mainstream media doesn't take it seriously you know the uh, part where the uh, the UFO was seen over George Bush's ranch like I said before we went into the commercial break one of the one of the eyewitnesses of the UFO in Stephenville was a pilot now don't you think that a pilot who is used to flying the airspace around Stephenville would have known that this so-called UFO that some say was 600 feet, others say the size of a Walmart, others say a mile and a half in diameter, would have caused heavy havoc and chaos that you just wouldn't have 10 F-16s flying all over the place. It would have caused such an action that the mainstream media, and I look at CNN because these guys, these guys are the best when it comes to instantaneous tabloid journalism and reporting the news. They would have been all over it like a, like a large kid with a bag of Smarties. But no, it's always the independents who come up with this idea that there has to be more to it than meets the eye. There are UFOs unidentified flying objects. Not everything is a spaceship. When it comes to the Phoenix Lights, again, 
another conspiracy the uh, theory even though you had the captain of the squadron that was flying the mission from the Maryland National Guard say that we dropped those flares there was no UFO that was our mission of course the government is lying the government always lies right guys wrong I just get a little tired of everybody always coming up with a conspiracy theory and never any proof. No proof. And isn't it funny that this meeting at the United Nations happened in the wake of the Stephenville UFO sighting? Coincidence? I don't think so. A well-thought-of marketing plan for people who have other reasons why this story should be circulated... If this, if this is a real event, where's the proof? How come it hasn't been reported in any credible news media? How come other countries aren't talking about it? My book, this event never happened. It was concocted for other purposes than to let mankind know that this is coming. I'll be back on the other side of the news as the Exxon continues. We're right here on the Talkstar Radio Network, Exxon TV, and on shortwave on Talkstar.